viral management used to be a mess, but not anymore. This tool is simple, super quick to use, and it is powered by a cordless drill battery. I started with a 6mm PVC sheet and drilled a 3mm hole in the center. That same drill bit was used to guide the palm router with a circular cutting jig. I've used this method many times before and it always gives me a clean, perfectly round cut. It is quick, reliable and saves a ton of time compared to other shaping methods. I flipped the jig and clamped it to the workbench. The same 3mm drill bit now centers the inner cut. This time we are cutting out the inside of the circle. Once that's done, I bring the piece over the table saw and cut a straight slot. That slot transforms the disc into a C shape. It might seem odd now, but trust me, you'll see why this step is important very soon. Now I moved on to building the base from 18mm plywood. I drilled the center hole using a drill press to ensure it was perfectly aligned and perpendicular to the surface. For the outer shape, I used the same palm router setup from earlier. A few small marks allow me to reposition the jig to carve the inner circle accurately. I used a spiral router bit again here. It gives that smooth, clean edge that looks almost finished straight off the tool. To complete the match with a PVC disc, I made the same kind of C-shaped slot on the table saw. This part of the base is what supports the main structure, so it's need to be exact. Each cut and edge matters here, to make sure everything lines up and runs smoothly later. Precision at this stage is key to avoiding problems down the road, especially when everything starts spinning. Now things started getting interesting. Time to mount the moving parts. I carefully marked and drilled holes to install the pulleys. For shafts, I used M5 hex bolts. Each one got a washer on one side and two nuts on the other. Normally, one nut is enough, but I needed some extra spacing from the plywood, so I added the second. It's pretty satisfying to see it all line up, solid and precise. I used 20T idler pulleys, 3 silver with teeth and 4 black without. Links to all used parts are in the description. Assembly order matters here. Install all 4 toothless pulleys first, then add the PVC disc and finally the silver pulleys. These will guide the G2 timing belt. Once the belt was temporarily placed, I added the final 60T pulley. Placement is everything here. The pulley needs just the right amount of belt tension, so I marked everything carefully. You'll notice the hole for this pulley is much larger than the shaft itself. That's because I'll be mounting a DC geared motor here and the pulley connects directly to it. The motor needs to sit deep in the plywood, so I drilled a large central hole and three smaller ones for mounting screws. I also countersunk them for a flush, clean look. All that careful measuring and prep work totally paid off in the end. Now onto assembly. Each small pulley bolt gets a nylon nut. It might look like I'm tightening them hard, but they are actually just snug enough to let the pulley spin freely and the nylon keeps the nuts from backing out. The motor slides in from the back and secured with the three M3 bolts. With the motor in place, I attach the 60T pulley along with the timing belt. After adjusting the position, I tightened it down using a grub screw on the side. Mechanically, we're all set. Time for a test. I connected a 12 volt DC power supply and just like that, smooth, clean rotation. Everything is running perfectly. I'm honestly thrilled because this design doesn't leave much room for adjustment. To give the machine a stable base, not just sitting on a thin plywood edge, I glued it on the thicker 18mm plywood platform. On the back, I found the perfect spot to mount the electronics. 
I used some CA glue to fix four 3D printed risers in place. This hold the PWM speed controller. It only costs a few bucks, but it gives you precise speed adjustment using just a knob. Then I designed a battery holder for a 12 volt Bosch cordless drill battery and sent the file to my newest machine in the workshop, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon with an AMS2 Pro unit on top. And this thing is on a whole different level. If you're seeing what the A1 3D printer can do, you know it's already fast. But this, thanks to its core XY design, the X1 Carbon isn't just printing fast, it's flying. And while it shares the nice features you'd expect from a solid entry-level printer, like auto bed leveling, live camera monitoring, and a slick touchscreen, it also steps into pro territory. We're talking about LiDAR-assisted calibration, AI-based first level inspection, a fully enclosed chamber and support for engineering grade materials. So whether you're printing regular PLA or tricky stuff like ABS, PC or PA, this printer handles it like a champ. And that enclosure? That's a game changer for me. My other printers used to sit in a room at home. But now I want everything in a workshop closer where I do stuff. The problem is dust. Dust on the bed, on the rails, even on a filament. It caused all sorts of quality issues and ruined plenty of prints. The enclosed design of the X1C solved that completely. Clean prints, reliable output, zero babysitting. Then there is the updated multi-material system called AMS2 Pro. It is fully enclosed, which helps protect the filament from dust, airborne particles and moisture in the air. No more brittle waterlogged filament. But the best part? It has a built-in filament dryer. That means I no longer have to deal with the separate drying setups. I just load the spools and I know the filament will be dry and ready to go. Plus it auto-switches between up to 4 colors or materials and with expansion hub it could scale up up to 16 colors at a time. Honestly, this setup has everything I need, all in one place. It is reliable, fast and built to handle demanding prints in a real workshop environment. Super happy with this upgrade. If you are looking to level up your 3D printing game, this combo might be the one. After printing, I glue the holder in place with a CA glue. This is the concept, using a cordless drill battery as the power source. It snaps in just like on the tool and clicks firmly in place. For wiring, I use short wires with the spade terminals that plugs directly into the battery connector. They are easy to disconnect, which makes battery swaps super simple. A similar setup I use for a motor, where wires are soldered on that end for a clean, solid connection. And finally, I added a foot pedal switch. That's the last piece in the control setup, giving me hands-free on-off control while keeping both hands on the wire during use. The speed controller adjusts how fast the motor spins, and the pedal acts as a simple on-off switch. This way I can hold the wires with both hands and start or stop the machine just by tapping the pedal with my foot. Super convenient when you are mid-process and need total control. The final missing part gets installed here. Secured over a drilled hole using an M6 bolt, a couple of washers and nuts. I'll be using cloth electrical tape for wrapping. It sticks really well, but still peels off cleanly. To hold the tape roll, I designed it and 3D printed a two-part adapter that sandwiches it from both sides. Now the roll slides right onto the bolt and locks in place with a nut, ready to spin freely when the device runs. And finally, the wrapping moment we have all been waiting for. I stuck the end of the tape down, pressed the foot pedal, and the machine spun up smoothly. All I had to do was guide the wires in and let it wrap. I could even pause, add more wires and keep going. It laid them out cleanly with perfect spacing. Honestly, I'm stoked with how well it works. All that careful measuring and prep work totally paid off in the end. What do you think? Can I call it well done? Drop your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next time.